Welcome to Sunrise Meditations on the beautiful and serene Enders Island. Today is Saturday of the fourth week of Lent, and I'm your host, Deacon Francis Valier. Alexio Divina is from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 7, verses 40 through 53. And let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who have prepared fitting helps for us in our weakness. Grant, we pray, that we may receive their healing effects with joy and reflect them in a holy way of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now let us listen and attend to our gospel passage proclaimed by Michael Toole. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Some in the crowd who heard these words of Jesus said, This is truly the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But others said, This Christ will not come from Galilee, will he? Does not Scripture say that the Christ will be of David's family? and come from Bethlehem, the village where David lived. So a division occurred in the crowd because of him. Some of them even wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. So the guards went to the chief priests and Pharisees, who asked them, Why did you not bring him? The guards answered, Never before has anyone spoken like this man. So the Pharisees answered them, Have you also been deceived? Have any of the authorities or the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd, which does not know the law, is accursed. Nicodemus, one of their members who had come to him earlier, said to them, Does our law condemn a man before it first hears him and finds out what he is doing? They answered and said to him, You are not from Galilee also, are you? Look and see that no prophet arises from Galilee. They each went to his own house. In today's Gospel reading according to St. John, we have a continuation of yesterday's confusion about the identity of Jesus. There is a conflict between what people are seeing and hearing and what they have been taught to believe. On the basis of his words and actions, Jesus looks like the Messiah, but As every Jewish child knows, the Messiah is not going to come from Galilee in the town of Nazareth, but is to come from Bethlehem and the family of David. Even the police are confused. When asked by the religious leaders why they have not arrested Jesus, they reply, there has never been anybody who has spoken like him. They are scolded for their ignorance never mind how impressively he speaks. Have any of the authorities or the Pharisees believed in him? And the crowds are written off as ignorant and cursed. But there is one Pharisee, Nicodemus, who had earlier, as we read in chapter 3 of St. John's Gospel, spoken with Jesus in secret and had been won over. Even the law says a man should be given a hearing before judgment is passed. He is swept aside by the leader's preconceived ideas that prophets do not come from Galilee. We need to remember we are not reading this passage simply to condemn the Jewish religious leaders or the Pharisees, but to reflect on our own prejudices and short-sightedness. How do we see Jesus? How do we see the gospel message? How do we see all of sacred scripture? How do we see the church or our parish community? How do we see its leaders? How do we view our family and our friends and our neighbors, not to mention strangers and outsiders? Let him or her who is totally without prejudice, who has never passed judgment, on another cast the first stone. 
Let us pray for an open mind to accept in its totality the message of Jesus, and also be very open about the many and surprising ways in which Jesus can speak to each one of us. If we are honest, there is something of the Pharisee in every one of us. After our closing prayer, we read the scripture passage and contemplate the message that is in there for us. Concentrate on a thought that comes to you, either through a verse or even just a word that touches you, and ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it pertains to you and how you may spiritually grow closer to Him. And let us complete our divine reading with a closing prayer. And let us pray. May your sacred word purify us, O Lord, we pray, and by our contemplation and obedience, render us fully pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be upon you always, and may his blessings fill your day with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.